Welcome to Astrophotography 101, Eliminating Star Trails. In any astrophotography, it is vital to have as sharp of stars as you can to make any details in the night sky stand out. Since the Earth is rotating, its motion under the stars gives the appearance that the stars are moving across the sky. The speed at which the sky rotates is an obstacle for photographers because when you use longer shutter speeds, the movement becomes apparent and the stars turn from specks to streaks. The longer the focal length of the lens, the smaller the region of the night sky you'll be photographing, and thus the movement of the stars will be more pronounced. This results in the need to use shorter shutter speeds. This calculation for this maximum shutter speed to retain sharp stars can be found a number of ways. You may have heard of something called the 500 rule. This is a common rule of thumb to calculate your maximum shutter speed. You may have also heard it called the 400 rule or 600 rule. It involves taking the larger number and dividing it by the focal length of your lens. This rule is not a bad formula, but you should avoid it if you can. The rule was designed for 35mm film grain at higher ISOs, but current digital sensors far out resolve grainy film, especially cameras with a high megapixel count, medium format cameras, or printing in large sizes. The rule doesn't take into account pixel density, aperture, or diffraction either. However, it is easy to remember and calculate in your head, so it is often used. If you're going to use this rule, I recommend subtracting 5 or 10 seconds from the result. The other method to calculate your shutter speed is using something called the NPF rule. The calculation is 35 times your lens aperture plus 30 times the pixel pitch of your camera, divided by the focal length of your lens. You probably know what aperture and focal length are, but what's pixel pitch? Pixel pitch is the camera's sensor's physical width in millimeters divided by the number of pixels in width times 1000 to measure it in microns. On screen are the pixel pitches of the top 20 most popular cameras on the market currently, but I will include a link to the spreadsheet with more cameras. The NPF rule will likely yield a much faster shutter speed than the 500 rule, but it will guarantee sharp stars every single time. Now both the NPF and 500 rules involve a camera on a stationary tripod, but you can extend your shutter speed dramatically with other devices. Motorized tracking mounts such as the Star Adventurer, Ioptron Sky Tracker, and the Vixen Polari rotate the camera at the same rate the Earth rotates, canceling out the star trailing effect. Instead of 15 or 20 second exposures with a wide angle lens, 4 or 5 minute exposures are possible. With longer exposures, higher F numbers can be used to increase sharpness and reduce lens abnormalities, and combined with a greater amount of light falling on the sensor, Milky Way details will be greatly enhanced. Attaching a telephoto lens to the tracker can also allow you to image fainter nebula and galaxies by stacking multiple exposures. Look for a tutorial on that later. Remember that in astrophotography you are trying to capture as much light as possible. So always find your maximum shutter speed using the NPF rule, or if you need it in a pinch, the 500 rule. Star trackers are nice to have and can dramatically increase your maximum shutter speed, but not needed whatsoever for beautiful images of our galaxy. Subscribe to Apple Apps for more animations about photography concepts, including Astrophotography 101 videos, which I will keep uploading. If you subscribe, hit the bell icon to stay notified when I upload. And before you leave, rate the video and leave a comment. Thanks for watching.